bookmarks and bookworms, welcome back to the channel and today I am going to talk you through the 20 books that are sitting on my September TBR. Now 20 books you may say is far more than I would usually read but I have succumbed and I will be participating in Shorty September that is making its rounds on booktube right now. This is purely to try and get the number of books that I've read so far in 2023 higher than it is right now and so I've picked out 11 of the shortest books on my TBR and surprisingly I didn't have that many because I do not gravitate towards short books but I have chosen 11 books that are under 200 pages. As well as that I have some new releases that I'm looking forward to reading like the Anne Enright new novel as well as reading for a video later on this month that quite possibly is my most anticipated video that I have filmed so far on my channel. Um, I won't tell you what it's about just yet but maybe from the book selections in this video you will be able to piece together what potentially this video is going to be on. <laughs> and finally I am starting my book club this month. One book read over two months so the September October choice is The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut so that is on my September TBR but I will read over the two months with the other people in that book club. There is still time to join. I know that the US release date is early October and so you will still have time to uh, read the book at your own leisure and join in with the discussions because the final discussion does not happen for The Maniac until the 31st October. So if you are in the US and would like to participate in the book club then by all means there is more than enough time for you to do so. The link to the book club will be linked in the description box down below. If The Maniac by Benjamin Labatut is a book that you would really like to get to sooner rather than later and read it alongside other people then by all means follow along and thank you for those of you who are already signed up and ready to go. The Maniac as I have mentioned previously is centred around the Hungarian polymath John von Neumann. It is written by the author of When We Cease to Understand the World and it follows a very similar theme and style. So we're very science orientated here. We are following the impact that von Neumann's work had on the dreams and nightmares of the 20th century and the age of AI. So that similar style of blending fact and fiction confronting us with some of the deepest questions we face as a species and when science and technology are used by tyrannical forces that lead to our own undoing. So I am thrilled that this is going to be my first book club with you all. The reviews coming out for this book are already insane and so I am raring to go. The next on my TBR is Victory City by Salman Rushdie which I did start back at the end of July, um, right before the Booker Prize announcement, because I thought, along with the rest of the world, that it would be nominated. It wasn't, and so I put it down in favour of the books that were on the long list, and so I am now returning to Victory City to finish, because it was absolutely amazing, the small section of it that I read. It's Salman Rushdie doing what Salman Rushdie does best, which is historical fiction blended with magical realism, blended with Indian mythology. This story centres around a young girl who becomes a goddess and is told that she is going to be instrumental in the creation of a new city called Victory City. What Rushdie is a master at is storytelling and the art of storytelling itself. And so I am just looking forward to that more than anything. The story could be about anything. And I think just because his way of almost totally embodying that old sense of the bard that is orally narrating stories as entertainment at an evening party and the more traditional magic of old fashioned storytelling, I feel is what Rushdie does best. It's almost like Scheherazade when she was there fighting for her life by storytelling every night to her husband. It almost feels like that Rushdie is putting on the performance of a lifetime almost when he uh, tells his stories because he is so captivating and he knows the essence and what has to be at the heart of a good story and that is ultimately character and struggle and a hero's journey that we go on as a reader with his character. Now Anne Enright's new novel The Wren the Wren 
is on my TBR for this month, but Anne Enright as an author is not one that I have come across before, so there is the potential then that I'm not going to get on with her writing, but having checked the reviews I would be surprised if I didn't, because she is well known as being a fantastic author, one of the best we have writing today, and she's writing about love and trauma within an Irish family from a multi-generational perspective. So that all has tick boxes next to it for me. It specifically focuses on the mothers and motherhood and the women of the family, and so that again is a tick box for me. I think it will all hinge on how I find the writing. Is it overwrought? Is it too simple? Um, does it flow nicely for me? Um, is the tone and style of the writing something that I like to read? So I think it will all hinge on the delivery. So, fingers crossed. <laughs> so now we're getting into that collection of books that are all being included because I'm doing a video that involves them all. So I shall list you off the ones that are being included. And if you want to have a guess down below as to what the video is going to be, then feel free to do so. So the books are Engleby by Sebastian Folks, The Absolute Book by Elizabeth Knox, The Likeness by Tana French, If We Were Villains by L.M. Rio, and My Education by Susan Choi. So, there is a common thread between all of those books, as unlikely as that may seem. Engleby is probably my most anticipated out of that list, because this is set at Cambridge University, it's told by an unreliable narrator who is a serial killer. It's sort of an anti-coming-of-age novel, which I really like the sound of. Um, I really quite fancy being inside the head of a an unreliable narrator who's also a serial killer rampaging his way around Cambridge. So I, I don't quite know why, I guess that's very morbid, but I'm just in the mood for a morbid September. The reading in general that I have done this August has been miserable. Um, not in terms of the reading, but just in terms of the books that I'm reading have all had this really depressing, morbid, sombre tone, and so I've just been dumped into, uh, mainly because of the book of books, I uh, can't lie on that front, and you'll hear more about that in my August wrap-up in a few days' time, but they have been melancholy to say the least, so <laughs> I'm just continuing that vibe with Engleby I think, and I'm I'm in the mood for that, as odd as that may seem. <laughs> the next one that I'm really not sure about is The Absolute Book, and this is fantasy slash magical realism. It centres around a cold case murder mystery. It's partially set in the real world, but partially set in this fantasy world where there are gods and magic and all of this sort of thing, so I may like this, I may not, but you will see in the video later on in September my full thoughts on this book and if it works for me. Because it is described as action-packed, whereas I wouldn't necessarily say the majority of my reading is action-packed, it's more character-based and often nothing happens, which I'm quite fine with. Um, so yes, the idea of running around mysterious worlds with you know, Norse gods and Indian gods it seems maybe a tad too fantastical for me. But who knows, maybe it will stay more towards magical realism and I'll love it, um, given the fact that my magical realism video that I just posted the other day is all about magical realism and how much I love it. And surprisingly, that video has done amazingly well. You all seem to agree with me in the comments that magical realism is where it's at and you're absolutely in that mood to have more magical realism in your life. So thank you for all of the love on that previous video. It's really nice to see. So the next one as part of this group is The Likeness by Tana French. Now this one is the second in the Dublin Murder Squad series. So it is a crime mystery thriller where the detective that we followed in the first book returns again. It's set in a college campus, high school environment where a young girl has died and Cassie Maddox, the detective that we follow, turns up and sees the ID of the dead girl and it's her identity when she used to be undercover. So that is the premise and so Cassie Maddox has to kind of go back undercover as her old fake identity to try and uncover why this dead body has turned up with her 
fake undercover name. I do like a crime mystery thriller now and then. I've enjoyed Tana French's first novel in this series and so I'm happy to go back again. The next book in this group is If We Were Villains. Now this one I believe is a dual timeline because we have one guy who's just been released from prison after 10 years for a murder that he may or may not have committed and then in another timeline we have a group of Shakespeare students studying at an elite art college where the plays and the tragedies and the romances that they're enacting on stage bleed over into their real lives until one of them ends up dead. And so these two narratives are going to, you would imagine, interweave. And I am quite looking forward to this one. I really hope it works for me. I know it's a bit of a TikTok book. I'm hoping it's not too YA or really YA at all because I don't like that. Um, I need some uh, I need some intelligence and style in the writing in order for a book to work for me. Otherwise, I may as well just watch a movie. You know, it has to be about the writing. And so that is the only concern that I have going into this book. Will the writing fail? I don't know. But lastly, in this group, we have My Education by Susan Choi. This is about a college aged young woman who falls for her enigmatic but charismatic professor. This is meant to be a queer contemporary romance and so I think the professor's wife is involved to some degree at some point. But is this going to be something similar to My Dark Vanessa or something similar to Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney? Who knows? I'm imagining it will be somewhere between the two. The writing is meant to be luscious and well crafted as well as quite a few steamy scenes so we will see how that goes because as I say this book is part of that group that I haven't necessarily chosen but they're for a video so we'll see how well I get on with them all. So that brings us to the 11 short books that I have put onto my September TBR to kind of bulk out the number of books that I'm going to have read totally for 2023. Up first is Claire Keegan's collection of short stories, Walk the Blue Fields. Um, this is a collection about despair and desire in modern day Ireland. Next is A Helping Hand by Celia Dale. This is meant to be an unputdownable classic suburban horror story. A deeply unnerving crime novel reminiscent of Shirley Jackson. The next slim novella is The English Understand Wool. I know relatively nothing about this novella other than that I added it to my TBR because of either Bob the Bookerer or Jalen over at Bar and the Bookcase. One of those two mentioned it on their channel and I added it as a result of that ages ago now. Then next we have Jim Crace's Being Dead. In this novella a middle-aged couple is found dead on a beach and we go back in time. So from the bodies being found we go back every two hours until we finally end up with how they died. I quite like that as a as a writing style um, to be going back in time and unpeeling the layers as to who they are and why they ended up where they ended up and that sort of thing. Next I've added on Shalimar which is a travel log type memoir that is talking about place and memory and belonging. This is an author that I have never experienced before but it sounds like a really interesting premise and a beautiful book cover. Then I've also added Quartet in Autumn by Barbara Pym. This was shortlisted for the Booker Prize years and years ago. I haven't got around to it. I have read several Barbara Pym's now. I have a very hit and miss relationship with her novels so it'll be interesting to see which side of the line this novel falls for me. Then I have In the Margins by Eleanor Ferrante. This is a collection of essays and I just expect to feel incredibly uh, dumb and simple reading this book uh, given that she is you know, a master of her craft and all of these essays are on the nature of writing and that sort of thing. The last four are all really interesting and will probably be the ones that I get on most with. We have one translated from the French, one translated from the Spanish, one translated from the Bulgarian and one that is a classic piece of Sudanese literature. So starting off with the French one, this is a New York Reviews Books edition of A King Alone which was translated from the French. This is an existential detective novel where in a snowbound mountain village the inhabitants end up disappearing and the detective is brought in to figure out what's going on. 
this feels very Agatha Christie uh, in its setting where it's a kind of a closed room community literally because they've been snowed in so it will be really interesting to see how fun uh, and playful this novel is going to be. Then we have All My Goodbyes which is the one being translated from the Spanish. This one is um, told in a series of overlapping vignettes as a woman escapes Argentina and travels across the globe and it's basically about all of those goodbyes that she has to say along the way to people. The penultimate little novella is Four Minutes and this is the one translated from the Bulgarian. This is about marginalised voices in post-communist Bulgaria. The novel contains nine standalone voices, each of which are meant to be read in four minutes, which is a nod to a social experiment that found that looking somebody in the eye and listening to them for four minutes was enough to create acceptance and empathy in that other person. So that sounds fantastic. And then that means that lastly, we're going to the Sudanese piece of literature, which is Season of Migration to the North. This has been on my list, my TBR for probably as long as I've had a TBR. Um, this came up on my radar again when Emmy mentioned it. And I thought, yes, I have had that on my TBR for years. I really ought to get to it. But this is uh, basically about a young narrator who has returned to Sudan after many years studying abroad in Europe. And he basically wants to come back with all of the hope and drive of youth and wants to contribute to this new post-colonial homeland. The writing of this is meant to be incredibly impressive. It's meant to be lyrical and rich. And this has actually been selected by a panel of Arab writers who call it the most important piece of Arab literature from the 20th century. So I feel like this is fundamental. We feel like you have to read this book at some point. And so, yes, hopefully September 2023 is when I'm going to read it. So if you would like to join the book club to read The Maniac with me and people who are already signed up, then do find the link in the description below. Um, it should be signposted for you. Look forward to discussing the book with you in book club for the next two months. So thank you very much for watching this video guys, make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you are new and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Mm -hmm.